Praise the Lord, everyone. Today I wanted to share with you that with the Lord, not without, okay, with the Lord, every grief, every sorrow will turn to joy. You know, during the last uh, upper, upper uh, discourse with his disciples, Lord Jesus he knew that the disciples are going to be sorrowful disciples are going to go through grief because of the sinners but these sinners are the religious leaders the religious leaders of that time who will persecute flog torture and humiliate their rabbi lord jesus and he told them that they will grieve but their grief they will it will turn to joy why even today some of you may be grieving in your life and some of the grieving may not be due to some other thing it could be due to someone or someone else someone who you, you stand for the truth as you stand for the truth they persecute you or because of ill health you suffer and even ill health is a consequence of sin. You suffer, you are sorrowful because of something that is not right in your life. You are sorrowful because you saw injustice. And all these are, this can be biblically interpreted. And we found that, <clears throat> yes, disciples are mourning, crying, weeping, sorrowful, grieving because of the injustice met out at Lord Jesus, their rabbi, their teacher. Even today, we may be suffering, and I'll tell you, because of the bad rulers, pe bad people who run bad government around the world, we have many, maybe due to some people who, who are just bad towards you. May, and also, to be frank with you, even the very air that we breathe, is polluted all these are consequence of the sin originally god did not create you know polluted world so we suffer unfairly maybe it's not your own wrongdoings also you suffer many times people of god they suffer but when you suffer for the right thing the righteous cause i want to assure you the lord will turn all those pain all those sorrow, all those pain, the Lord can turn into joy. I want to share with you this truth today. With the Lord, every sorrow, every grief can turn to joy. The text is from John chapter 16, verse 20. The Lord Jesus spoke to his disciples. Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve and your grief will turn to joy why they will be sorrowful disciples because their rabbi will be arrested very sorrowful not only that they will put a very heavy case on him there is no escape but just capital punishment and they will be mourn Lord, they will mourn Lord Jesus is warning them okay they will mourn because he they not only torture him with the worst kind of punishment and humiliation spitting on his face they scorn at him they disrespect and show utter disrespect towards lord jesus how painful sorrowful they will be they cannot face the religious leaders anymore earlier they were they used to explain and now they have no face at all they are total humiliation their rabbi was humiliated you know the cross was uh, invented by the persians and they say it's perfected by the romans and that's what they did to lord, to lord jesus and so the rabbis what happens while they're weeping the world will rejoice the irony is they are weeping they are sad they are mourning but they are rejoicing see look at this these followers of jesus they will mock at them and say these are imposters trying to be the messiah see how they end up and 
they will be so sorrowful. The Lord Jesus, he warned them. He told them already, right? But he said, for a little while you will not see me. So he went on to tell them, it's like, a woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come, but when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. So the Lord Jesus told them. You will mourn. The irony is when they are mourning and weeping, the world rejoices. But you will grieve, you, your grief will turn to joy. Your sorrow will turn to joy, as the, some other translations uses the word sorrow. Yes, the world today, they are happy if Christians are not doing, uh, doing well or like, oh, we told you so. You are following this Jesus, but see, he has not rescued, he has not done anything for you. Okay. Or they will say, okay, this Christianity followers are decreasing. Two followers of Jesus are increasing. Nominal Christians, fake Christians, or cultural Christians are many. So those people, they are not believers in the first place. There are outward Jews and inward Jews. There are outward Christians and inward Christians. So outward Christians are many in plenty, right? But the real followers are they can never leave. For nominal Christians, if the church attendance are dropping in Europe, it's understandable. For nominal Christians, cultural Christians to go to church every Sunday, it's impossible, it's not possible. But for the believers, not only Sunday, they want to go more, they want to spend more time with the Lord. The reality is like that, like this in, in the world today. So, Lord Jesus, in fact, He warned them in verse 32 a time is coming in fact has come when you you will be scattered each to your own home but you leave me alone but yet i am not alone for my father is with me i have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world you will have trouble but take heart i have overcome the world hallelujah you see in the, i am telling you this in advance so that you may understand what is going to happen in this world, you will have trouble. In this world, why we have trouble? Because of these wicked people. These religious leaders are the people who are supposed to keep the law of God and protect those who are righteous, right? What is law for? Law is to protect the righteous so that people who are bad will not commit crime against them. It is to protect them. The religious leaders are to protect the righteous people also in a way. But these very people who are supposed to protect the law are persecuting them, make their lives difficult. Does it sound, does it ring into you, to you? Does it sound the same? In many countries it's happening this way as well. The people who are supposed to protect the law take the law into their hands and misuse it because of the sinful people. Because of, so therefore, in this world we have trouble. Are you sorrowful because you have trouble? The Lord warned them, don't be. You, but you'll be sorrowful, I understand, but your sorrow will turn to joy. In this world, because of the bad rulers, which are plenty around the world, bad governments, you may be sorrowful. Because of the bad people surrounding you, you may be sorrowful. Because, you know, this is world is fallen, the very air we breathe itself is polluted. So, we have ill health, we are sorrowful at times because of our ill health. We are sorrowful because of bad finance. Maybe someone cheated us, someone did something wrong unfairly to us. There are so many ways in which we are sorrowful. Like disciples, it was not their doing. It was the persecutors. It was the Jewish religious leaders. They are persecuting them wrongfully. They are persecuted and they are very sorrowful. They are persecuting them and their rabbi. They strike the ringleader. 
See, we told you so. This is a wrong heresy. This is wrong teaching. So finally, we have put him to an end. Okay, but the Lord told them all these things already. Your sorrow will turn to joy. Lord Jesus said, for a little while you'll not see me anymore, but you'll see me again. In other words, don't be sorrowful. The Lord, in fact, the Lord is the one who wants them to under understand this very thing. Why? He told them, don't be sorrowful. Because Lord, the Lord also mentioned, whenever he said it's like this situation is like a mother who is pregnant about to give birth but when to in order to give birth she bleeds she suffers all the pains comes to her but all this anguish will be forgotten because it will give birth to a new life a child is born she'll forget and she'll be joyful the, 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 no one comes to say, Oh, you are suffering so much last yesterday. Are you better? No, no, they don't say, Congratulations, you have a baby. <laughs> they don't say, they don't talk about her suffering yesterday anymore, right? The, today there's. The Bible teaches us there are two kinds of birth. This is good birth, right? You may be, you may be suffering, you may be painful, you may be, you may be bleeding, but it will give birth to something beautiful something good a new life is given but there is another type of birth sin firstly desire is conceived apostle james tells us james chapter 1 verse 15 then desire has conceived it gives birth to sin okay and sin when it is fully grown it gives birth to death okay what is going on this is also giving birth but what kind of birth they are giving death when a mother who is waiting for a newborn baby wait is waiting in you know waiting in full expectations how will the baby look like what who he will resemble he or she will resemble they're waiting but all it gives but they're waiting pregnancy was difficult but finally what gives but to death how sorrowful it is right the other side, even though they are sorrowful, even though they are suffering, but it gives birth to righteousness. When a person stays in righteousness, it gives birth to joy. The person who pursue wickedness, they will give, when it is fully grown, it will give birth to death. Sorrow will, they, might, they look like they are starting well. The people of the world, sometimes they look like they are winning. Oh, they are doing well everything they are following they don't follow God they don't have fear of God they, it looks like they are doing well but at the end it gives death but people of God maybe you are suffering you are sorrowful you are even persecuted because you want righteousness following Lord Jesus listening to him trying to follow throughout his life what a beautiful thing but they suffer as a consequence but they to give birth to a new life not just said because remember people of God have to stay when in sorrow in grieving they should not be committing sin they should not be turning to hopelessness and maybe becoming violent maybe becoming two types of things are there you can become violent or self withdrawal condemning self-condemnation and become depressed and committed you can even commit suicide but remember the lord watches over the righteous psalm 121 verse 5 says the lord watches over you the lord is your shade at the right hand psalm 34 15 the eyes of the lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry the Lord watches over. You need to remember. There was Judas. He, he was also very sorrowful. One day when he realized that his rabbi was captured, 
and torture and flog with all, all kinds of humiliation, spit on his face. He also couldn't bear actually, if you read the scripture carefully. He was sad. So he took the money and go back to the, uh, the, the Jewish religious leaders and say, take back this money, I don't want. But what did he do? In his sorrow, he went and committed suicide. In your sorrow, don't sin. In your grieving, don't do something worse. Remember, the Lord is with you. He is about to resurrect your dreams and visions. He is about to give you joy. Go till the end. Go follow till the Lord. Go, go follow the Lord till the end. Even Peter also, Apostle Peter, Disciple Peter, he also was so sorrowful. But did he commit suicide? No. He repented and he turned towards the Lord and the Lord reinstated him. The, likewise, we have in the Old Testament as well as New Testament a very good example how the sorrow turned to joy. There was Joseph, his own brothers hated him and they sold him. How grieving, how sorrowful he would have been, right? A proud son of his father has been sold as a slave to Egypt. And in Egypt, he became a slave. And God was with him, righteous one. He was a righteous one. God was with him. And he was made a chief servant. <laughs> and at that time, as a chief servant, his master's wife tried to sleep with him. Come and bed with me, he said. Every day he persuaded him. But he said, no. Since he was falsely accused, he was put into prison, dungeon. He wants to remain faithful. How sorrowful is it from sorrow to sorrow, right? He's going from sorrow to sorrow, <laughs> grieving to grieving, right? When he was in the prison, he was able to interpret dreams. The Pharaoh, the king came to know his dream. No one could interpret. He was able to interpret and he was made the second in command in this greatest, most powerful nation on earth at that time. His grief, his sorrow, all this grief and sorrow turned to joy. I cannot imagine how happy, how rejoicing he will be. Disciples also, they were so grieving that they could not go out to face the people. Some of them, they started to go out from Jerusalem. They slip away. Two disciples on the road to Emmaus, they were, called, they were going away from Jerusalem to a village called Emmaus. And Lord Jesus, who resurrected, appeared to them. Their face was so downcast. They were so sorrowful. And they say, they, when Lord Jesus started to explain, to make the long story short, the Lord, Lord Jesus explained to them, broke the bread and reminded them everything. He disappeared. And now they realize, oh, the Lord has resurrected. They are so joyful. Those who are going away sad when they understood the resurrection, they immediately came back at night. They didn't even sleep at night. They rushed back to Jerusalem. They informed other people. Indeed, they received the joy. The Lord tells us, yes, for some of us, we have not got our joy. We are still suffering because of the sinful environment, sinful, sinful people around us, and sinful rulers and the governments. We suffer, but go till the end. The Lord will resurrect you. If the Lord comes before the joy comes, He will give you permanent joy. Wow! We'll go to heaven. In say Revelation, Revelation chapter 21, 21 verse 4 says, He will wave every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain over there. Total rejoicing. The old orders of things have passed away. On this earth only we mourn, we cry, we weep. In heaven there is no more like that. Total joy, total celebration. That is awaiting for us. For believers, you may be going through sorrow and pain. Maybe even ill health, maybe fin bad finance, maybe any kind of sorrow and persecution. Many times it comes to us because of the sinful people around us, sinful environment, sinful air, polluted air. 
we suffer a consequence, we may mourn. But remember, if you mourn for the righteous cause, if you grieve for, uh, and you want to follow the path of the cross, there are troubles. Lord Jesus told them, in this world you will have trouble. In this world you will have trouble, but I have overcome the world. In this world we will have trouble. The believers are not immune to problems and difficulties. We will face troubles, troubles, but the Lord is with us and He knows them. In heaven there will be no more troubles. May we be the ones who understand this and say, I may be going through sorrow and pain, but I know that the Lord will bring joy soon or later. I must not do anything stupid in my sorrow and in my grieving. I must stay true to my faith and I must wait for the Lord to bring joy. Because what? After the, the cross, the path of the cross is mourning. The path of the cross, death, is there is death. But that is not the end. There is resurrection. On the day of the, His coming, we all will resurrect finally also, right? And there is a beyond suffering, beyond the cross, beyond grieving, beyond sorrow, there is joy, there is rejoicing. And that is there in Christ alone. Others, for others, sufferings means sufferings. Suffering means suffering. Grieving means grieving. But for believers, even death cannot defeat. Even death, grieving in death can turn to joy. Who can do that? How wonderful is that? Only God can do for us. Stay in faith and experience the joy. Remember, there is a way that the Lord has made. We will stay there. We will be faithful. We will follow Him. We will hope on Him. We will stay righteous by living by faith. And the Lord will bring to pass the joy, the joy in our lives. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. I want to praise you, O Lord, for your wonderful time of looking at your word. O Lord, your word has promised us, tells us that our sorrow will turn to joy because he will resurrect. And when you resurrect, all those who claim, all those who say that this is wrong, this following Christ is wrong, they will be utterly surprised. They will be humiliated reversely. O oh Lord, we have understood your love. You, we have understood your way. In our sorrow, in our grief, may we not sin. May we not become like Judas. May we be the ones who rather repent like Peter so that we can be reinstalled, reinstated and we may know, we will know that grief, sorrow with you is worth because you can turn everything to joy. If not on this earth, when we come to you, you will do. You will wipe away every tears and you will come us into heaven joyfully. We thank you for this blessing. We receive it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you for watching and um, may God bless you. Amen.